Hello, everybody. Today, we're gonna learn about laws, all right? A guy with his titties out, smoking a hell of cigarettes, driving a crappy truck, is gonna tell you about the legality of circumcision and what laws it breaks to circumcise someone who is a child specifically in a hospital but also generally in general <laughs> uh, so I was thinking about making this video for a long time and I was thinking about making it like an actual nice video with like a screen recording um, the law is displayed but then I was thinking to myself well I don't really need that I don't need to, to display them on the screen. You could look them up for yourself if you want, and I, I implore you, please do. These are Wisconsin laws, but most of these laws are gonna be uh, pretty universal. You're gonna find a law like this in your state. Um, so, I thought it would be nice if I could just tell you it like this, because guess what? If uh, if a cigarette smoking, titties out, pickup truck guy can figure out that circumcision is illegal and what laws it breaks, I don't think anybody else has much excuse for, uh, for not knowing this. You know, particularly people in law enforcement or lawyers, anything like that, or uh, doctors, religious circumcision people. Whoever, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any excuse. So let's, let's just, uh, let's just dive right in. Woo! Dive right into the actual topic since I'm just fucking around bullshitting for like three, four minutes now. So what, what, what laws does it break? We implore you, you we're, we're your YouTube audience. What laws does it break? We don't know. Well, I'm sure some of you know and some of you don't. So first law it breaks, the most obvious law it breaks is, uh, First degree sexual assault. Now people like to argue with me about this. They say it's it's not sexual assault. It's HIV, HIV benefits. HIV, penile cancer. Uh, shut up. Uh, if I raped a woman, and then I said afterwards, you were benefited. Now you're pregnant. You're gonna have a kid. Mothers are very fulfilled people. Like that that wouldn't justify it, would it? Well, I'm not concerning myself with benefits. I don't think there are any. Um, and it clearly is. A sexual assault it is an assault on the genitalia of a child um, without their consent of course since they're a child and um, since it's causing great bodily harm an entire part of their body is removed they bleed and uh, sometimes die that's that's what constitutes first degree um, so it's first degree sexual assault I'm not gonna provide that much explanation for these I think it's simple I think it's pretty simple a lot of these and I'm going to try to keep track of which ones I've said, so I don't have to do too much video editing later, cutting parts out and stuff, circumcising the video and reattaching it and having adhesions in the video editing program and stuff like that. I don't want that. No, that's a lot of work. Um, I'd rather just leave the video intact, the way the way God intended. Um, so what else? We got we got first degree sexual assault. So I'll hit you with an odd one. There's a law called false imprisonment which is where if you can find somebody or restrain somebody without due legal cause, it is illegal by the law, false imprisonment. And in circumcision, regardless of what kind of circumcision it is, if it's a circumcision of a child, the person is either held down or they're strapped down, which is false imprisonment. Again, I, I, don't, need, I don't need a whole essay, I don't need 10 paragraphs to tell you about this just go look up a video of a circumcision or go look up how it's performed there's a thing called a circumstraint and um, you know I, I don't know I don't know if anybody would ever make this argument but it's 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 uh it's gonna be really hard to convince me that infants uh, um, broke some sort of law that necess necessitated that they uh, they be strapped down and restrained it's gonna be really hard to convince me of that I'm gonna keep the cigarettes rolling all this video 
All you people out there that don't know this, man, why are you so ignorant? Watch my video, watch the rest of it, because there's way more laws coming up. So, um, uh, I'll, I'll go with the fraud ones, just get these out of the way. There's a whole lawsuit about this right now. And you can look into it if you want. It's a lawsuit against the AAP, because the AAP lied. They lied. They put out all these fake, nonsense um, benefits. It's those benefits again. So they're being sued, and what they're being sued for is um, uh, abetting fraud, facilitating this fraud that is circumcision. Because these doctors lie to parents and say, oh, it's got all these benefits and it's non-harmful. Ooh, it's that witchcraft. It's that witchcraft that makes uh, cutting into the genitalia non-painful and non-harmful. It's that witchcraft, bro. Um, gonna hotbox this bitch with cigarettes. It's gonna smell real gross in here. You can tell. Um, basically, these laws concerning fraud, it's intentional fraud because, hey, guess what? When you're tying an infant down to rip off half the skin of their genitalia to, uh, to profit, to get paid and to sell that, as hospitals do, you can look up human dermal fibroblast on the internet, you are intentionally committing fraud. You are intending to commit fraud against the parents and that child. Um, you're, you're intending to lie to them and tell them that this is medicine when it isn't. So that's intentional fraud. And then there's constructive fraud. Um, so constructive fraud is fraud that it concerns, concerns itself with um, trusted people, trusted parties, such as your doctor. You're supposed to be able to trust your doctor to give you accurate information about medicine and not to harm you. Yet, in circumcision, your doctor will give you inaccurate information and will harm your child, ergo you. Um, so that's what makes it constructive fraud. And then, the other thing is medical fraud. When uh, unnecessary medical care is given, particularly on the basis of these lies, and profit is made, you know, that's, that's the part that's fraud, and that is medical fraud. Um, so that's, that's five different laws, right? That's false imprisonment, first degree sexual assault, and then those three types of fraud. So what else is there? Um, since this is a sexual assault, and since they are using tools, I will consider those tools weapons. The same way I would consider my, um, my truck a weapon if I were to um, run it into a crowd of people, even though right now it is nothing but a utilitarian tool to get me from point A to B. The same way a scalpel is a tool used in surgery, uh, but it, it would be a weapon to assault somebody with it, as is done in circumcision. The same way a forceps is a tool, it becomes a weapon. The same way a probe is a tool, it becomes a weapon. And this circumstraint, um, I guess that's just a weapon, because it's only used to uh, do harmful things to a child, as far as I know. So what, what law am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about reckless injury with a weapon. Um, reckless injury with a weapon concerns itself with, I, I think it concerns itself with injuring somebody with a weapon showing zero regard for that person's life, which circumcision does. Uh, it does not show any regard for a person's life. It shows no regard for the person that will, uh, for what that person will become and what that person may think, what, what they may want. It shows zero regard for their consent and it shows zero regard for uh, keeping them intact and not, not injuring them. So I consider it to be reckless injury with a weapon as well. Um, so what else? We're up to six. We're up to six laws that are broken in circumcision. So, what else should I go with? Um, hmm, human trafficking. So, human trafficking, I'm paraphrasing a bit, so I don't have the definition in front of me. Human trafficking concerns itself with, um, when one person pays another person and then an unconsented sex act is committed onto somebody, onto a person. Uh, basically, the sex act is paid for. Uh, so that's exactly what happens in circumcision. Circumcision is a sex act. It's male genital mutilation, but it is a sex act. act. Uh, the, penetra uh, their, the genitalia is penetrated. Um, the pen uh, 
genitalia is stimulated and the genitalia is definitely very much so involved. So I, I, I can't imagine what somebody's logic would be uh, when they say it's not a sex act. And then, of course, in, in a hospital, it's paid for. It's paid for by somebody. So by the definition of human trafficking, this is a sex act that is paid for. It is human trafficking. <sighs> really simple shit. Like I, 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 I gotta say again, I was, I was thinking about making like a whole written out screen cap video about this, and I said, just, it's easier this way. I was spending too much time, I was getting too much upset doing that. It's easier just for me to rant it out, smoke a cigarette, and tell you. So we're up to seven lies. So what else? What else? Pray tell, Mr. Titties Man. What else? Um, so there are more, in fact. So, next one, since I'm mentioning trafficking, is forbidding organ trafficking. So, whether or not the hospitals sell the cutoff foreskin after the circumcision, it is still organ trafficking because money was exchanged and then the person's organ, the skin, the, the dermis, uh, the foreskin, is exchanged. The, the ownership of it is exchanged. Anyway. And that's what constitutes organ trafficking. When somebody's organs are, are bought by somebody and the, the ownership of them is exchanged. I mean, that one's really obvious. And then you can go look at... Um, uh, websites like promocell.com, sellapplications.com, I think that's what the websites are, that are selling this tissue. And that is, again, that is, that is, a, that is probably a third time that the organs are trafficked. See, when the, when the hospital sells the foreskin to other places, that is a second, that is a second time the organ was trafficked. The first time was uh, from the parents they, they assumed ownership of something that wasn't theirs, for one, which is another person's body, and sold it to the hospital, to the circumcisors. That's organ trafficking. Then if the hospital sells it to a place like PromoCell or Cell Applications, that's a second. That's a second organ trafficking. Then if uh, Cell Applications and PromoCell sell it to somebody else, then that's a third time the same organ has been trafficked. And also, since this is uh, somebody's property, which is the property of the person who has the body. So if it's my body and it's my foreskin, then um, if somebody else takes it, particularly if they take it with weapons, what they're using here is weapons, these forceps, probe, tool, circumstraint, um, and they take it without my consent, of course, or anybody, anybody's consent, any, any male, then it is also armed theft. And I know people like to laugh the only argument anybody has to this shit is just <laughs> what a ridiculous person, right? Hoping everybody will agree. But there's no real argument. This is an armed theft. Um, and I've calculated this out. I can go find my graphic. And this is just straight by um, the prices on promocell.com. And then I found out the volume of a foreskin. Then I found out the volume of a cell. I did math to find out how many cells were in a foreskin both adult and infant, and then I did uh, math to find out how much they were charging per sale, I found out that an infant foreskin, at the, that the rates they're charging by the number of cells in it and by the size of it is worth about three hundred to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars But that's not the price that I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with the price of an, a male adult foreskin and uh, the size of it and the rate they're selling it is worth twenty to twenty five million dollars based on for sale listings on the internet that you can bring up right now. Um, so that is an armed theft of $25 million, or what would be $25 million, I'm considering it that much, of, of uh, material, of objects, of somebody's body. So it is also armed theft, or armed robbery, I think is the actual law, but it's theft regardless, and it uses weapons to do so. And they incur injury, while it's done. So it is 
is armed robbery is, is the actual law, but it is theft as well. But that's not all. That's not all. There is a law that forbids molestation, and there is a law that forget, forbids uh, pedophilia. As this is both molestation, rape of a child, it is definitely pedophilia. Um, if, you, if you know what circumcision is, there is a part in circumcision, in uh, every medical circumcision at the very least, and probably most uh, religious circumcisions in the United States, maybe not, well definitely not all of them, but most of them, maybe, I don't know, I'm talking on my ass about that, definitely medical ones, is they, they take a rag that has a cleaning solution on it and just, just start wiping it all around the dick. And then there is another step where they stimulate the penis specifically to give the child an erection so they know so they know how much um, how much skin to cut now that's molestation now the part where they penetrate between the foreskin and the glands to separate the foreskin from the glands they do that with a probe that fits the definition of the rape when you keep in mind that the 14th amendment exists so that definitions like the FBI's current definition of rape can be applied to everyone. So that if they're discriminatory, they can be applied to everyone. So this, I, I already said this is a sex act. It, it absolutely is. And uh, therefore it's pedophilia. Therefore it breaks the law on pedophilia. It breaks the law on molestation. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not done. I'm still not done. Sorry, I'm not done. I not, I'm not. There's more laws that this breaks. So, in, uh, in Wisconsin, we have a law that forbids female genital mutilation. Now, I know, I know, the biggest argument to this one is, again, it's... <laughs> what a ridiculous person! <laughs> um, that's not an argument. The law on FGM is a discriminatory law because it only concerns itself with women with girls. Now, I mentioned the 14th Amendment already, but this is another case of the 14th Amendment is here for this reason. The 14th Amendment is here so discriminatory laws, like the law on female genital mutilation, can be applied to instances where somebody who's male has their genitalia mutilated, or somebody who's intersex, non-binary, doesn't identify as male or female, can still have this law apply to them. This is what the 14th Amendment is for. Therefore, circumcision breaks the law on FGM in Wisconsin. And then that's not it. That's still not it. If you are wondering if circumcision breaks the law, does it break the law? No, it breaks like a bunch of laws, all right? And like, a, like a whole bunch of them. So what other law does it break? I only got one more in mind. Well, maybe two more. But one more. It's basically one more. I'd have to actually go look up what the laws specifically are in this, because I think there's more than one. So, since circumcision is performed exclusively, exclusively with when, it, when it's done in a, in a hospital, when it's done medically, it's done exclusively with devices that were invented by Jewish people. The NC2 method, which is the without blood method, which is a misnomer, they all have blood, um, the NC2 method was invented by a Jewish man, an American Jewish man. Um, so the Shang Ring, the Plasti Bell, and every other device like it is born from Jewish invention. Then the Mogan clamp was invented by a Jewish American man. Then, I think, I think it was American, definitely Jewish. Uh, then the Gomco clamp. Gomco stands for Goldstein Medical Company. So I think you can figure out that that was made by a Jewish person. Probably, right? Yeah, it was definitely invented by a Jewish person. Um, and as we know, as we know, circumcision is a Jewish ritual. When this is done to a child, we know, we absolutely know, that this is a religious mark permanently scarified into their body. And what this does is it violates the person's right to religious determination. It, it violates that right. People defend this, this uh, grotesque victimization. They, they defend it on the no notion 
that it is um, that it is protected by religious freedom. And I've got to say, no, it is illegal by religious freedom. Circumcision violates any underage person's religious rights. They did not consent to have a religious marking scarified into their body. I did not. This law was broken against me, as were every single one of these other laws. Um, so no, no, religious freedom does not protect circumcision. It is illegal by religious freedom. Only the most perverted sense of religious freedom can be applied to a third party imparting their religion onto somebody else. That's specifically what religious freedom was supposed to protect people against. Now I saved this one for last because I, I just know somebody out there was going, yeah, but, but religious, religious freedom, and it, no, sorry, sorry. It's my right to ret determine which religious markings are on my body, and I'm sad to say that for me and most other American men, that right was not respected. And anyway, there's probably more laws. There's probably more laws that uh, circumcision breaks, but I don't know. Um, maybe it could be considered speeding. Probably not, but maybe. You're going too fast. <laughs> um, anyway. To cap off this video, I'm gonna roast the tires on my truck, hopefully. Ah, I won't do it, it's a piece of shit, fuck. I'll do a pull. Woo! All right. And if anybody's got a problem with that, cause it's, cause it's illegal, well, run out and take care of these child rapists first, you bunch of fucks.